is going no contact biblical, especially going no contact with someone who's narcissistic, toxic, detrimental to your well-being, detrimental to your spiritual growth and personal development. This question was actually posed by one of the members of this channel. Don't forget to like, subscribe, share if you find value here. Let's get this channel to 100,000 subscribers. I know with your help, we can reach that goal. So I'm going to answer that question in three Bible scriptures. Let's jump right in. So the first scripture is 1 Corinthians 15, verse 33. And it says, do not be deceived. Bad company corrupts good character. Bad company corrupts good character. So one of the things that someone who is narcissistic, manipulative, someone who comes into your life to create drama, confusion, division to bring you down is they might try to deceive you into believing that because you are a Christian, you have to tolerate their bad company, meaning you have to tolerate their toxic behavior, whether that's coming in the form of verbal abuse, emotional abuse, put downs, which are verbal, verbal abuse, uh, diminishing comments, one upping and things that uh, just break you down and drag you down and treating you like you are their psychological punching bag, their doormat where they could wipe their feet and their emotional toilet bowl. You are not called to be somebody's emotional toilet bowl. We are called to walk in love. Walking in love does not mean walking in foolishness. Walking in love does not mean walking in drama, division, discord, and divisiveness, right? And so the Bible lets us know that we are to be peaceful as far as it depends on us, right? So the scripture says, if it be possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. So you can only control your part of any interaction of any dynamic. And the scripture starts with, if it is possible. So the fact that the scripture starts with, if it is possible, lets us know that sometimes it is not possible, right? If it is possible, live at peace with everyone. And so the first thing that uh, you want to determine is, if is it even possible to be at peace with this individual and what does peace look like right romans 12 verse 18 what does peace look like so sometimes peace looks like separation remember the story of abraham and lot in the book of genesis so sometimes uh peace looks like separation sometimes peace looks like not looking back when god brings you out of something as when god tells uh, uh lot's wife not to look back and she looks back and becomes a pillar of salt, so to speak. So there are some relationships that God brought you out of because it was so detrimental to your growth, your well-being, your very life. And he's saying, don't look back. But some people are using the fact that the holidays are coming up or this is your cousin or, you know, this is family and this person has done you so dirty and you have totally forgiven them because this is where people like to play the manipulation game and gaslight you because forgiveness does not always equate walking with someone. You need to be in agreement and alignment to walk with someone, to do life with them, to have fellowship with them. So make sure that you are making that distinction and disturbing that. Amos 3.3 says, can two walk together except they be agreed? So an example is I can wholeheartedly forgive you for stealing from me, but I could make the choice to not invite you in my home and leave you in my home when I am not around and just say, hey, make yourself at home. Here are my valuables and I'm going to go outside and I'll be back in five hours and you just make yourself at home and steal from me again. That would make me a fool. And so I could totally forgive the person that I'm not harboring malice, but I do have to respect the fruit. We know people by their fruit. And so if you're showing me the fruit, of thievery, if you're showing me the fruit of envy, if you're showing me the fruit of constantly bringing me down, trying to tear me down, if you are hostile to my purpose and my destiny, you are an enemy. And the Bible talks about enemies a lot. And so as believers, sometimes we have selective amnesia as if we don't understand uh, many of the principles that the Bible uh, teaches us. 
And so do not let somebody, this is what I'm getting at, gaslight you into believing that you have to tolerate abuse because you are a believer that you have to keep putting yourself in the line of fire and just saying, walk all over me, step all over me, defecate all over me, do whatever horrific uh, animalistic thing you can think of. And I'm just going to sit here and say, hey, keep doing it to me. Of course not. So do not be deceived. <clears throat> Bad company corrupts good morals. And the way that it corrupts good morals, good character is that and there are a number of ways, but I'm just going to give you the cliff note version. When somebody is treating you horrifically, you are only human. It is a matter of time before you're going to clap back. It's a matter of time before your anger is going to take you out of character. It's a matter of time before you may do something you may regret. All of us, we're human beings. And so the Bible tells us, in your anger, do not sin. Do not let the sun go down while you're angry. But in order to not sin when you're angry, you have to put yourself in positions where your anger is not easily triggered. And if someone is easily triggering you because they're being disrespectful, they're disregarding your boundaries time and time again, they're picking on you, they're being nasty and mean towards you, then you want to remove yourself from those environments when you can. So 1 Corinthians 15.33 do not be deceived. Bad company corrupts good character. And so you were trying to grow in the things of God. You were trying to grow in the fruit of the spirit. And one of those fruits is patience. But there are times when people test your patience and your patience wears thin. And you want to be mindful of saying, you know, I'm, I'm starting to feel like my patience is running thin. I'm going to fall into anger and I'm, 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 I might react in a way that I'm going to go off on this person. I'm going to spaz. And because I don't want to spaz, I need to go no contact with them. Sometimes the no contact is not about the other person. It is about your own mental well-being, your own spiritual growth, your own health, and keeping yourself out of jail because you're like, you're going to catch these hands. If I'm trying, but you're going to catch these hands. You're going to catch these hands. I, I, I don't want to go there. Or I'm going to send my younger cousins and we're going to take it to the streets. We, we, we don't want to do that. And so for my own to keep me out of sin, I, I, I got to move away. I, I, I got to disconnect myself. So that's number one. Second scripture. Second Corinthians chapter six, verse 17. Wherefore come out from among them and be ye separate. What does it say? Come out from among them. Does it say go towards them? No, it does not. Come out from among them and be ye separate. So does it say be ye separate or does it say be ye in close fellowship talking every day? Come out from among them and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing and I will receive you. And so when a person is living an unclean life and they want to bring that filth to you in the form of weaponizing your vulnerabilities, in the form of constantly kicking you when you're down, in the form of tearing you down, knocking you down, breaking you down, just doing vicious and vile things, at some point you will have to come out from among them and separate yourself. And so the reason sometimes we feel so depressed, we feel so anxious, we feel so sad and bad is because we are keeping company with people who we are not equally yoked with. We are keeping company with people whose season in our lives is over. We are keeping company with people who we don't need to be around. The Bible says, pray for those who persecute you, not stay, not stay, pray. And so this could be that friend, that family member, and you have made the decision to distance yourself and you may pray, Lord, I pray that you bless them. Lord, I pray that you help them find what their gifts and talents are. Lord, I hope, I pray that you help them to see the error of their ways so that they can stop being so mean spirited. You can pray for these things. So pray don't mean stay. So that's number two, second Corinthians six seventeen. come out from among them and be ye separate. So Going no contact is very biblical. The Bible doesn't use the word no contact, but you will see the principle of no contact throughout the Bible. 2 Corinthians 6.14. This is our third scripture. 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 14. Do not be unequally yoked with unbelievers. For what fellowship has righteousness with unrighteousness and what communion has light with darkness? Don't get no clearer than this. 
And so some of you are yoked to people who are unbelievers. And unbelievers is not limited to people who don't believe in the same faith. It is also people who live by a different set of values. And so if someone lives by the values of wanting to create drama, wanting to gossip, uh, wanting to just create mayhem and all kind of confusion, division, and evil and wickedness wherever they go, and you are trying to move your life forward in purpose and destiny, you're not out here trying to hurt nobody, you're not out here trying to harm people, you are just trying to live your life, walk in purpose, grow spiritually, be of help as the Lord leads, but you have a wicked person around you who doesn't believe how you believe. You know, some people get off on doing evil, just like you may wake up in the morning with, uh, on your mind, thinking about how you can be a blessing to somebody else or on your mind, how you can reach your goals. You wake up with that on your mind. There's people that they wake up with on their mind is how can I scam somebody, right? Serial killers wake up with the goal of finding somebody to kill. And so there are people in the world who are wicked and evil. And I think that as believers, when we pretend that these things don't exist, like we tiptoeing through the tulips, you do yourself a disservice and you're sourly disappointed. And so don't let somebody gaslight you, guilt trip you, or game you into believing that going no contact is unbiblical and they will try to weaponize your forgiveness. I can forgive you wholeheartedly, but realize that you are detrimental to my well-being. You are unhealthy uh, to be around and you are an enemy to my purpose and my destiny. You are an enemy to my very life my very mental health and sometimes my my physical life and so when i recognize that i have to exercise wisdom so there you have three scriptures and i'm gonna throw in a bonus one and it's amos 3 3 can two walk together except they be agreed so when you're walking your life in the direction of spiritual growth personal development self-actualizing through christ self mastery through growing in the fruit of the spirit and through biblical wisdom and somebody else is walking their life in the direction of demonic activities wickedness evilness creating mayhem and discord and doing mean-spirited things to other people's lives you are not walking in the same direction you're not in alignment two people can only walk together that means be in close fellowship go in the same direction if they agreed. So if I am going from West 4th Street in Manhattan to 34th Street, and I meet someone who is going from West 4th Street to, uh, they're going to Brooklyn. So they're taking the subway in the opposite direction. We're both on the subway platform, but I'm going from West 4th Street to 34th Street and they're going from West 4th Street to Atlantic Avenue in Brooklyn. We are going in two separate directions. So there are only two options here. Either I am going to go in the direction where they are going, which is Atlantic Avenue in Brooklyn, and that's not my intention. That's not where I am supposed to be going on this particular day, or they have to change their route, their destiny, and go to 34th Street instead of going to Atlantic Avenue where they were purposed to go on that day. So one of us is changing the direction. And the reason why so many of you are depressed and anxious and sad and mad all the time and triggered is because you are allowing people to change the trajectory of your life because you're in fellowship with them. You are talking with them constantly rather than making clear hard decisions. Be comfortable, and you will hear me say this, with being the villain in a liar and a manipulated story. When you are dealing with a person who is mean-spirited, has ill will towards you, and they will lie to try to gaslight you, guilt trip you, and game play you, and they will lie to other people to shape a narrative, don't go defending yourself and wasting your time. People are going to believe what they want to believe. Let them. Let them, let them. 
all they're showing you is they were never fully rocking with you to begin with. They did you a favor. God exposed who was on your side and who wasn't on your side. Thank you, Lord, for exposing that this person wasn't really for me. So I don't waste another second of my time extending my good energy to this person. See, we're going to get clear today. And so be very clear. You don't want to speak to me no more. So be it. I'm not going to beg you. I ain't even going to ask you why. So if you don't want to speak to me no more because you're trying to manipulate me, gaslight me, play games with me, mind screw me. Yes, yeah, I said mind screw. If it's offensive, get off my channel. I'm not for you. So if you were trying to do all of these things and I make the choice to step back for my own health and well-being and then you want to lie on my name and make me the villain and the worst person in the world because I pull back from your gossip and your your craziness and so be it that's what it is so be it stop letting people treat you like you are their personal puppet on a string at some point you got to put your foot down we are called to be soldiers in the army of the lord not farmers we're called to be soldiers in the army of the lord we wrestle not wrestle means battle fight we wrestle not against flesh and blood but against principalities and spiritual wickedness in high places so you're not even really wrestling against the individual even though that's the manifestation in terms of what you see with your eyes you're wrestling with the spirit that is driving the behavior whether it is the spirit of envy the spirit of resentment the spirit of coveting the spirit of greed uh, uh the spirit of self-seeking whatever the spirit is that's really what you're dealing with and so you're not even supposed to be in fellowship and so you if you are coming from the spirit of patience compassion grace and kindness and you're dealing with a person who's in a spiritual space of ill will and evil, what fellowship does light have with darkness? What fellowship does righteousness have with unrighteousness? When they're in that spiritual space, what fellowship you have with them? And so don't let somebody, this is what I'm getting at, manipulate you into believing that you have to take their phone calls and that you have to spend time with them and that you have to be best friends and be in constant contact when the Holy Spirit has already showed you that they don't mean you no good. Don't let them manipulate you into believing that because you are a Christian, that you have to keep somebody around you to keep putting a knife in your back. You ought to pray for those who persecute you, but you most certainly don't have to stay. And so let these scriptures that I shared with you, for those of you who have made the hard decision to go no contact with someone and you prayed about it. This, this wasn't just something you did, you know, out of thin air. You prayed about it. You lamented over it. You went to the Lord for yourself and you are settled and at peace with your decision. You don't have no hostility in your heart towards this person because sometimes it's not about hostility. It's about tired, tired. Like, Lord, I'm casting this care on you. I can't carry this friendship anymore. I got to cast this on you. I can't carry this relationship with this cousin or this adult sibling or this individual, whoever that person may be. You can fill in the blanks. I, I, I can't do it no more. It is draining the very life force out of me. And I don't even have the energy to do the things that you have called and purposed me to do. And I know that that is not how you would have me live. Because I am your workmanship created to do good works. According to Ephesians 2 verse 10. I am your workmanship created to do good works. And not only that, I am your workmanship created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which you prepared for me beforehand that I may walk in them. So you created me in Christ Jesus to do good works. You didn't create me to tolerate abuse. You didn't create me according to Ephesians 2.10. You didn't create me to allow someone to keep spitting in my face and me to say, okay, spit in my face again. Just, just make it a spitting contest. Just spit on me as much as you want. While you at it, defecate on me too. No, no, no. You are not anybody's emotional punching bag. And don't let somebody make you believe that being a Christian means being soft. Gentle doesn't mean soft. Moses was the meekest man in the land. The Bible describes Moses as the meekest man in the land. 
and Moses led a nation out of bondage. And you think he led the nation out of bondage by saying, okay, uh, please uh, let my people go. No, he led a revolt. And so he's meek, but, but he's bowed and bowed at the same time. And so do understand that meekness, and we did a whole teaching on this if you were part of church by phone, that meekness doesn't mean weakness. It's far from it. Meekness is, con is controlled strength. Meekness is if I wanted to, I could do X, Y, and Z, but I am choosing to chill. It is the mindset of the martial artist who has the ability to kill you with his bare hands. But he is taught or she is taught in self-defense. The first thing you want to do is avoid a fight. Because your hands are a lethal weapon and your feet, you want to avoid a fight. You want to do everything you can to not fight, even if it means running from the fight. And you're running from the fight, not because you're scared of the other person, but you know if they catch these hands, you may end their life. And you enjoy your freedom because you don't know how it's going to go in court. And so meekness is controlled strength. It means you have the strength, right? You can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. You have the strength, but you are reining that strength in. You're not really coming at full throttle. There are times you rein your strength in. Like there are certain things like if I, you, you want to say what to me? Like I could bring up the time you did. And then the Holy Spirit will guide you. No, nah, don't say that. Don't say that. Just keep your peace. Hold your peace. And the things that you can put in place to be able to hold your peace, sometimes it means going no contact. Going no contact with someone who's toxic. And yes, toxic people can change. Anybody can change. But you can't change them. They are a job for Jesus. You can't change them. That's the key. You, specifically, I can't change them. We can pray for the change. And then... They got to be a willing vessel, just like you were a willing vessel. And I was a willing vessel. So I hope that was helpful. A couple of announcements I want to let you know about. So on November 23rd, which is a Saturday, we're having a vision board workshop on Zoom. So that means wherever you are around the world, you can be part of this vision board workshop. So many of you were uh, a little disappointed that you weren't able to come to the Fix, My, uh, Fix Your Crown Sis workshop that we did live in new york city in person but the beauty about the zoom event is you can join from whatever country you're located in so we're really going to be focusing on how do you end the year strong and we're creating a very specific type of vision board we're creating a five-fold vision board so you may have attended vision board workshops in the past you may have attended one of mine vision board workshops in the past but for this specific vision board we're focusing on a five-fold vision board uh, uh workshop that's what we're focused on and i'm going to take you through the process of how to create the five-fold vision board so that you can end this year strong and start the new year with greater focus greater clarity and uh, just greater sense of direction to really begin to put your hand towards your goal so if you want to read the details about the workshop you'll see that there is a link in the video description box you'll see it says get your tickets click on that link it'll take you to eventbrite and you can learn more about the workshop and you can also purchase your tickets from eventbrite you just click on the link and follow the prompts from there if you want to really develop more strategies to be unstoppable to be an individual where it's really becoming more and more difficult to game you. There are two books that I would recommend. Number one is Rise Above the Haters. That is a journal that will cultivate what I call your hater-proof skills. Rise Above the Haters. The second book is Unleash Your Unstoppable. And that is a book that does just what it sounds like. It really shows you how to begin to tap into the qualities and characteristics that God put in you. It operates as a devotional as a workbook and as a journal all wrapped up into one and that's unleash your unstoppable i would recommend those two books all of my books are available at amazon some of my books are available at barnes and nobles target and walmart some but you can get them all at amazon so that's the main place for anyone who's interested in resources beyond the video a lot of you ask can you book a call 
Do I offer coaching? So I do offer coaching. It's, it's, uh, it's the, what's the word I'm looking for? So I do offer coaching, but it is more of a strategy session. So we're really looking at a specific issue that you want to work through. And then we're looking at developing strategies, goals, and a plan around that. And so if that sounds like something that you're interested in, you will see the link where you can find out more information if you're interested in booking a call. So with that being said, have an amazing day. Let's be kind to one another, but let's also use our discernment, wisdom, and our common sense. God bless you. No matter who you are, you will have haters. John 15 verse 18 says, If the world hates you, know that it hated Jesus first. So if you have haters, know that God is greater than your haters. Lately you've been feeling, feeling the way of your haters coming at you with their envy and their hate, scheming against you, throwing mud on your name. But God's gonna work it out despite their lies and game. God is greater, so much greater than your haters. God is greater, don't give up, it'll pay off later. God is greater, through the pain you're a giant slayer. Let the haters hate while you your goals keep rising keep shining your haters can't stop no show they can hate all they want to remember you are blessed never let a hater see you sweat cause this is just a test god is greater so much greater than your haters god is greater don't give up it'll pay off later god is greater the pain you're a giant slayer Let the haters hate While you elevate Don't let the negativity Poison your mind Run your race with grace One day at a time They can laugh and they can mock you But you won't miss a beat When people don't receive you Shake the dust off your feet God is greater, so much greater 